Hey guys, this is Cubition. This is my second tutorial in my series of tutorials how to use LMS. This tutorial will be covering pad synth. Sub synth I played around with a while since my last tutorial and found it not be super useful. So as far as subtractive synthesizers go, there are a lot better ones out there that can produce much better sounds than Zenetsu effects. However, with AdSynth and PadSynth, Zenetsu effects can pretty much make almost any sound you're really looking for. So PadSynth, open it up. It obviously looks different than AdSynth because it is different. Envelopes and LFOs is where you get all the options that you do in AdSynth. I'm going to turn the volume up because it is very, very quiet. Make sure to turn your filter frequency up so you can actually hear what it sounds like. Um, pad synth, even though it only has one oscillator, it's definitely going to sound a lot different than you just, because this is a sawtooth. Um, you can't hear it. Apply changes. Before you do anything, um, uh, hit apply changes. So that obviously sounds a lot different than just your average sawtooth. Why? It's because it's got not only detuning but frequency distribution. So what that means is that it takes this wave and it samples it 128,000 times or about, I think. Um, I think that's what the sample size is. I mean, yeah, that's what the sample size is. So it takes this one oscillator, makes 128,000 copies of it, and detunes each one slightly within 18.4 cents. However, it's not as simple as just detuning it within a random amount of 18.4. It actually, this line is negative 18.4, this line is positive 18.4. The blue is how much probability that one oscillator copy is of being that much detuned. So it's actually more likely to be tuned here than it is detuned. So if you do this, this becomes negative 18.4 and this becomes positive 18.4. As you can see, it makes it so that it is most likely to be in tune than it is to detuned. And you really can't tell very much. However, if you adjust the width like this, this is negative 18.4, this is positive 18.4, it is going to be very, very, very close to being perfectly in tune. Of course, the reason you can't hear it is because I keep freaking hit apply changes. So if I hit apply changes, it sounds a lot different. On the other hand, if I do this, apply changes, it's uh, got a wider sound. So, this can actually be really handy. You can actually change it so that it's like that, so it has an equal probability of being anywhere within 18.4. That gives you more of a trancey sound. Kind of your trance, whatever. And then double exponent. That's actually uh, really handy if you're trying to get something that's very in tune but also kind of has a slight detune to it. Almost like a combination between the two. So. That's how distribution works. However, in bandwidth down here, you can change how much these lines actually are. So I can crank that up to 70. Or to 410 or 305. Almost becomes white noise. Or I can crank it down to 0 0.3. And it's almost got kind of like a car horn. Um, uh, Something I actually like to play around with a lot is this amp multiplier. It's essentially a second one of these.
Um, um, and you can choose different uh, kinds, so you can actually extensively shape the detuning. So that way, it's very in tune, but it's got a slight detune for the rest of it. And it's on 205, 305, so this should be white noise, by all means. And to some extent, it still sounds like it. <laughs> so I'm going to play. So you can hear it's kind of got the white noise-ish in the background, but it's mostly in tune. Um, So you can play with um, the harmonic distribution with that. Envelope cellphones, same as AdSynth. So this, like I said, is mostly made for making pads. So uh, a pad, kind of like your background noise. So. That's the basics of how to use pad synth. Um, so, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe, like, etc., and make awesome pads. Alright, see you guys.